Well, hello there. I'm gonna start this video off with a pendy, a petty Pendergrass moment. This is, I don't know, maybe this is the place to put it. Maybe not, I don't know, but um, I'm gonna put it here anyway. I was out with my girlfriend who is 5'3 and 130 pounds. That's very, 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 very important. And my girlfriend, she likes to go to places that I don't really like to go. So we happen to be in Walmart of all places. And then we run into one of my ex-girlfriends. And have you ever been in a situation where you saw someone that you used to date and you were like, thank God that ended. This chick was out with her new dude, who, who wasn't me. She must have gained 50 pounds. And you know, me, it's a petty Pendergrass moment. I'm like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? This is such and such, who's that? And she's like, my husband. And I said, well, I'm glad to see you two are expecting because she was that fat, I thought she was pregnant. And they both kind of looked at each other and she says, I'm not pregnant. Oops. This petty Pendergrass moment was brought to you by the Institute of Economic Thought. It was so bad. My girlfriend was in the car laughing her ass off and she said, you used to date her? I had to go to my phone and find some old pictures to prove that she didn't look like that. Like I said, this chick must've gained like 50 pounds and was, I was just like, whoa. 50 pounds on a woman who was like 5'2". That's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. Probably be doing some more of these petty, <laughs> petty, petty Pendergrass moments because I was like, God dang it. I mean, she, she porked up. I mean, it was like, but anywho, that's neither here nor there. Let's get into today's video. I have people sending me stuff. Um, friends sent me this clip of this woman who was going off on what appeared to be McDonald's talking about my child is hungry going off on these employees and to the employees felt so bad. I was like, I'll pay for it. The employees said I would pay for it. And the title was winter is coming. I don't think winter is coming. Winter is here. And one of the things that you're starting to see it, cause like I'm all over this, this housing thing because it is blowing my mind. Cause I checked the rental prices in my old neighborhood and I'm seeing houses that I know for a fact are in the hood, kind of close to that price point. You know, $2,800 is not that much from 3,000. You know, it's not that far away. And I'm just seeing this. And like I said, I, I had a lot of people who are expecting a housing crash. I think you people are gonna be terribly disappointed. We're just not gonna have a housing crash because as I said, and that we don't have enough housing for the people we already have. And this is gonna keep rent, rent, rent is, um, Rent is crazy right now. Um, I talked to someone who used to live an hour outside of Atlanta, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, depending, you know, 45 minutes with no traffic, 50 minutes, 60 minutes plus with traffic. And uh, she was paying 850 and now that rent has gone up to 1163 for a two bedroom apartment. For a two bedroom apartment. And I was just sitting there like, and here in Atlanta, rent for a one bedroom apartment is, is close to 1,500, 1,600 bucks a month. So winter is here. It's 
cold, people are shivering. And what's gonna happen, you know, winter is not coming. Winter, winter is here. Um, it's gonna get colder. It's gonna get colder because I'm just looking at this. Um, there's this YouTuber, I'm not mentioning her name because I don't want to send any traffic her way, but um, she was talking about, you know, buying businesses and saying that there was a huge wave of people who are going to retire, but their kids want to be TikTokers and YouTubers and they have no interest in running these million dollar businesses. And based upon what I know about today's economy and how people are, I would say that's not too far off that like with TikTok, I don't really consume a lot of TikTok content. However, everybody wants attention. This is, this is the hype cycle we're in. Everyone wants attention, whether it's a YouTube channel, a TikTok channel, a podcast or whatever, everyone wants attention. And no one, it's not true. I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna say a smaller segment of the society is about being productive, about building stuff. Cause let me go ahead and say, winter is here. And if you wanna make a lot of money in the dead of winter, you can. However, you got to work. And that that's the problem. That, that right there is, I don't even know how to call it. You know, I was born in 1966 and I came up in a different era. When I was a kid, you know one of the most coveted jobs you can get being a bagger at the grocery store. It was inside, it was clean. You got to wear a little tie and your little shirt. And you, you, you walked your friends and family and neighbors to their car and bag their, that was a, that was a, that, that was a hard to get job. There was a waiting list to be a bagger in the local grocery store. That was, that was such a coveted job. And what, what I'm saying is kids wanted to work. They could not wait. I mean, I remember sitting around talking to my friends and we could not wait to turn 13. You could kind of work but 15 was the magic number, 15, 16, you could work. I remember going to Pizza Hut, because this is what we used to do. We used to play football back in the day, high school football. And after a game, we would go to Pizza Hut. And who would be there in Pizza Hut? It would be our friends. It would be people we knew who worked at Pizza Hut. The oldest person in the Pizza Hut was the manager. You did not see grandma, granddad up in Pizza Hut or um, Taco Bell or McDonald's. Like I said, when I was a kid coming up, the oldest person in the McDonald's, the oldest person in the Taco Bell, the oldest person in the Pizza Hut was the manager. Everyone else was teenagers. Everyone else was teenagers or you know, college age. I cannot ever remember going to a McDonald's or a Burger King, and we'll tell you something in a minute about Burger King, and seeing an old person, and I would classify old clearly above 50, working in the McDonald's. Back in the day, Burger King had the most delicious flame broiled hamburgers ever um i used to love burger king more so than mcdonald's because they, they were so i mean you you place your order and they, they didn't cook your food until you were there and you after you place your order they did not pre-cook anything and i remember just sitting there waiting like the five or six minutes it took for that burger. And then they would like slide that tray and the fries would be steaming and the burger would be steaming. And at that first juicy bite, you just, your mouth would just be in heaven because it was, it was so good. It was so juicy. Man, in many regards, I had a really good childhood. And when I remember 
If you were in the Birmingham area, there was this place called Sneaky Pete's and they used to serve chili dogs and hot dogs. And they, they were some of the best chili dogs, hot dogs. I don't even, I don't even know if that place still exists, but once again, you never saw anyone once again the oldest person in there was the manager and you you know what you could tell it was the manager because they would have on maybe a blue shirt and a little tie and everyone else would have on the mcdonald's or sneaky Pete's or burger king uniforms and this is this is and i'm going somewhere with this i'm about to start cooking we have turned into a society where upward mobility, because someone left a comment, it was like, this guy's wrong. You know, you can like work at a company and you, you can work your way up. Okay. The number of companies where you can go in and work an entry level job and work your way up to VP level is extremely, extremely small today. At one point, this was all of America. I know a guy who used to pump gas at the service station and he worked his way up from pumping gas to being inside, running the cash register to where the owner made him a partner. And he ran the place while the owner was off chilling, doing whatever he wanted to do. That America is dead and gone. And this is one of the reasons that winter is here. Um, Unless you take it upon yourself to do something significant and hard, like, you know, I'm selling the intellectual property school and I'm selling it correctly. I'm not saying that you're going to start a YouTube channel and you're going to immediately blow up. And you're going to start making all this money. I'm like about 12 months and I, I'm selling it correctly. I'm not saying that you're going to, you know, uh, start making all this money and all this other stuff. And a lot of people to their credit have signed up, but it's not selling like my other things did because, you know, one of the things, and this is one of the reasons that I am um, selling it the way I'm selling it. It's called user experience. When you buy one of my courses, like, you know, I am not, trying to say that you're going to do what I did in 2020. Um, you want to know why? Let me tell you why. That was extremely atypical. You have people in the online space that make it seem like starting a two or million or a two million or a three million dollar year business is super easy, is super simple, and you've got all this time to be on YouTube talking to folks. You've got this multi-million dollar business and you could be on you. Okay, the reality is, if you really had a multi-million dollar business, one of the last places you would be is on YouTube because you'd be running your business. And also, you know, because I came up through the YouTube ranks, that's why I'm here. Um, you know, I know really rich people and I've actually sat down and I've talked to them. And this is one of the things that I have collectively seen with a group of people that I know have money. There's a certain level of paranoia. These people, I got like the richest person I know. If you asked him what he did, he would lie to you. He would not tell you he owns apartment complexes. He would say, oh, I'm a consultant or I'm a manager. He would not tell you that he owns hundreds of millions. He, he would not tell you. And the reason he told me, it's like, he says, when people find out that you're rich, they start acting different. They start treating you strange. He's like, I want to be treated like a regular person. And he says, from a deal standpoint, making deals, when people know that you have money, um, they get a little strange, you know, the, the price goes up, you know, and he said there were so many things because he says when he was first coming up and people didn't know who he was and they didn't know his ability and they didn't know his means, he was able to get deal after deal after deal. 
And then once he started to develop a reputation in the industry, it became harder and harder for him to get those juicy deals. So collectively, truly wealthy people are, you know, are just not on YouTube unless it helps them make money. Case in point, Manny Korshman. Go ahead and look up Manny Korshman if you don't know. Manny has this $30 million car collection and he, he, he's got, you know, he is on YouTube, he's on Instagram. His wife is on Instagram. She has like 1.6, these folks are truly rich. Multi-million dollar a year business, live in the mansion. He's been driving Rolls Royces for 15, 16 years. Uh, Manny is legitimately rich and Manny uses social media to make more money. So in the case of a Kim Kardashian, a Kanye West, there are people who are legitimately rich who use social media to make more money to amplify their message. But for, let's, you know, that's kind of strange. Let's say for the average rich person, if there's such a thing, the average rich person, let's say you own a heating and air company, a high vac company, and you do like five million a year, that's enable you to live in a million dollar house, that's enable you to send your kids to private school. You're not trying to come on social media and flex. You're just not. And this is something I've seen because typically, um, the people you see on YouTube and Instagram who are flexing hard use social media to make more money. And I'm not saying that's wrong because, you know, I use social media to make money. I'm not saying that's wrong at all. But typically, if you see a truly rich person on social media, there's a reason. There's an agenda. They ain't just on here to be on here to thrill you with their fancy vacations or their fancy cars or their fancy house. Because like, once again, if you notice, you guys have not seen me post a receipt in a hot minute. And you wanna know why? Because posting receipts like that makes you a target. Uh, there's been numerous athletes and rich people in Atlanta that have been robbed or had home invasions because they were posting receipts. Uh, there was this one chick and I know exactly where she lives. She had posted about her vacation on social media, put I'm on vacation now. And some people decided to go to her house and rob her when she happened to be coming back and they ran into the robbers and it was like, it was crazy. It was crazy and I know exactly where she lives because when they showed the community, I know exactly where that community was. And how did they know where did she live? Because she put it on social media. Uh, you know, I'm probably, because I'm like, once again, I'm staying here another year because I don't want to go through moving again. It's just such a big pain and a hassle. And I don't want to actually be straight up with you guys. I'm probably going to move into a house after this. And um, I don't really feel like dealing with the housing market at the moment. Just don't. I, I will stay here another year, let it cool down and regulate and then jump into that next year. But um, yeah, winter is here. Winter is here right now. And you're going to see a lot of people who are suffering. You're going to see a lot of people who are going to be challenged because one of the things that I was doing, and then you call it the homeless people count of Sandy Springs. I lived in Sandy Springs 13 years. I saw two homeless people for many years and it, the numbers did not grow and then they did not beg. But during COVID, there's about, I lost count at about 75 of the new homeless people in Sandy Springs. And I want you to understand, if homeless people are moving into Sandy Springs like that, they're moving all across America like that because Sandy Springs, let, let me tell you about Sandy Springs. Sandy Springs is a unique place because when I was working at Northside Hospital, that's how long Sandy Springs was trying to succeed from Fulton County. And they finally got away with it and became their own municipality because Sandy Springs has sick money. 
Because, you know, when I was doing the video blogs and showing you my neighborhoods, you notice how much space was between the houses. Where I lived, there just wasn't like bumper to bumper traffic because it wasn't that dense because all these people were sitting on an acre or two or three or four or five acres, big ass house, it just wasn't dense. So over in my side of Sandy Spring, didn't really run into a lot of traffic until you got on the 285 with the rest of the world. But Sandy Springs was really unique in terms of getting rid of certain things. You cannot open up a car dealership in Sandy Springs. You cannot, um, strip clubs, they got rid of, they had three strip clubs. They got rid of all the strip clubs to the point that one of the strip clubs building, for some reason that building was knocked down. And recently a company just, because this strip club has property has been empty for 10 years. It's just been sitting there wasting away. And I actually looked at that property because when I was in the rental car business, I was thinking about starting a car dealership. I actually called out to these people and they told me the city of Sandy Springs is not going to let you start a car dealership. They were just straight up. It's like we've had people ask before and they just not going to do it. So you can't start a strip club. You can't start a car dealership. You cannot open up any more liquor stores. So Sandy Springs has done as much as possible to sanitize the neighborhood of the Riff Raff or the attraction of Riff Raff or Riff Raff draws. So you, you're not going to see, you can't even start an auto parts store inside Sandy Springs. You can't. It must be a spot that was automotive and it was grandfathered in as automotive. So what you're going to see, and I say I'd like to say that for the have this influx of homeless people moving to Sandy Springs is very atypical. And I guarantee you that the people in the city hall of Sandy Springs are very well aware of the sudden influx of homeless people because um, the confession time, because the city of Sandy Springs Police Department was dealing with violent crime that they actually sent me a message and told me, and this was another reason I got out the car rental business, that they were not going to investigate any more of my stolen cars. What I would have to do was go to 130 Trinity and swear it on warrant downtown in Fulton County to get these people. And I was like, okay, and that was, once I got that message, I stopped renting cars out that day because I've had 18 people arrested. These, these folks refuse to bring back my cars. They absolutely refuse. Wasn't paying me, ignoring me, and refused to bring back the cars. And I realized that, you know, that the hassle factor of owning a rental car business just exponentially got harder because now I was going to have to get in my car, go downtown Atlanta, stand in line at some window to swear on a warrant for these people. I'm like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. And that, that's one of the things. And one of the reasons I got that message is the incidents of violent crime has skyrocketed in Sandy Springs. Uh, home invasions, violent robberies, murders, all this stuff has spiked. And that's why winter is here because people are desperate. People are desperate for a piece of government cheese. People are desperate. And this is just the beginning. Right now we're in the world. Well, hey, maybe we have a recession. Hey, maybe we don't. I'm seeing some YouTubers who's like, hey, we don't have a recession. We're in a recession, okay? We're in a recession and it's going to get worse. And it's going to get so worse that it will officially be called a recession probably uh, 2023 because housing, housing, once again, I don't think housing is going to crash. I think housing is going to seriously correct because a lot of these houses were dramatically overpriced. But going back to the rental market, uh, I, my heart goes out to someone who's not making a lot of money trying to rent a place here in Atlanta. I mean, I am on Zillow watch every day and what I am seeing is stupid. I am seeing houses in the damn hood that the average person cannot afford. 2,800 bucks a month. You know what 
that is? That's $31,000 a year in rent. You making $35,000 a year, you can't afford that. And let's say if you wanna tough it out where you're married and you make 35 and your wife makes 35, 50% of your income is going towards rent. That is unsustainable. I don't see rental prices crashing, but I do see them slowing down because the rental increases have been phenomenal. But this is why winter is here. Winter is here. Going back to the beginning of my situation uh, of the video when I was talking about Petty Pendergrass, this woman married I'm gonna say it, cause dude didn't look like he had any money. She married who she could marry because she wanted to be free to get fat. What you're gonna see, and this is, this is a, you're gonna see a lot of women adjust their standards. Mark my words, like right now, you're seeing these women um, talking about they cannot date a man that makes less, six, less than six figures. I'm, I'm calling bullshit on that. What you're going to see during this inflationary period is a lot of women choose average men because that's all they can get. See, there's going to be a point where something's going to click in their mind like, yeah, I might want a six-figure dude, but I can't get a six-figure dude but I can go over here and get this guy making 20,000. I can go over here and get this guy making 30,000. I can get this guy making 40,000 and call it a day and be happy. So I know a lot of the red pill and mig toe men and all this other stuff, like women are going to make a huge, huge, uh, huge adjustment. Huge, huge adjustment. And like, once again, when I saw her, because I almost didn't recognize her because she got that fat. Because I saw her, then she turned around and I saw her face and I was like, oh my God. I thought she was pregnant. So what you're gonna see, because once again, this kind of goes back to the America that we're in. Remember I was telling you like how kids could not wait to work? People cannot wait to be lazy. Like once again, uh, I am 250 pounds and you want to know why I'm 250 pounds because I get my ass on the scale every day and when I start porking up and start gaining weight like if I gain like three pounds guess what I go back to my fasting routine and I knock it off because I refuse to be a 300 pound dude I refuse it ain't gonna happen my heaviest I was 350 with my health issues 350 is a death sentence. It's early death. I would probably kick off in my 60s at 350. So I am well aware of the ramifications of what's gonna happen if I let myself go. These women, they don't care. This is the season to let yourself go. This is the season to get fat. This is the season to be lazy. This is the season to be slothing. Cause like I said, like, Man, when I saw that, and I would, I realized, actually, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest. If she had gotten too big, I would've dumped her. Just straight up, just keep it real. Um, I actually gave a girlfriend the fat girl talk. I was like, look, you need me to go walking with you, or you need, cause you get any bigger. I, I actually said these words, there ain't no way in hell I'm marrying the fat chick. I actually said those words and that may come across as cruel or insensitive, but once again, once again, you know, um, you got to look at the situation and you know, for me, my preference is a smaller woman, a smaller, submissive, feminine woman. I do not want Orca. I do not want, you know, um, What's, what's the name? Uh, I, I just, I'm just, I, I can't do that, man. I just can't do that. And, you know, I know that there are plenty of kind-hearted, good, loving fat chicks. You wanna know why? 
They have to be. You can't be fat and have an attitude. Give me a break. And I'm just sitting there like, and dude was holding her hand and they had a kid, which was probably his kid. And the kid looked to be about two. And what you really think about this? Really, really want to think about this. This is how the state is changing. This woman who was dating a seven figure dude has downgraded to a dude who recently had a kid with another woman. I want you to think about that. Because Miss, she used to be fancy and all her standards have changed because essentially she wants to be free to let herself go and still be in the house because I wouldn't have put up with that. But once again, you're going to see a lot of women are going to change their standards. They're going to change their, because winter is here. Winter ain't coming. Winter is here. Homelessness is spiking up. Violent crime is spiking up. All of this stuff is happening. And like this guy just sent me this, this video, of this woman talking about my child hungry. My child hungry. The kid appeared to be 10, 10 years old. He been getting hungry for 10 years. This ain't nothing new to you. This ain't nothing new. But winter is here. And a lot of people are not prepared for winter. They don't have the winter provisions. They don't have the coat. They don't have the, the heating oil. They don't have the firewood. They are out here and that cold winter is just <laughs> tagging that ass. Because winter is here. Winter is here and winter is not gonna be playing with people. Winter is like cancer. You know how someone gets cancer and cancer don't play? Cancer be taking people out left and right. I had a friend who was diagnosed with cancer in January. He died in June. He looked healthy, but cancer doesn't play. And winter ain't going to be playing with people. You're going to see what my first sergeant, my drill sergeant used to call an attitude adjustment amongst men and women. Because right now people are playing. They're going to stop playing because winter is here and winter ain't playing with you. Winter is like, oh, you don't have that rent. You get evicted, you get evicted, you get a, an eviction for you, an eviction for you, an eviction for you. Oh, what? You're not going to pay your mortgage. Psst, the mortgage moratorium is over. We're going to start foreclosing. And like right now, you know, people talking about foreclosures of 700%. That really is meaningless because there was no foreclosures during the pandemic. So if you will look at the foreclosures that happened in 2009 and compare those numbers that happened to the foreclosures, now that would make sense. And I guarantee it would not be like a 700% increase because they didn't have any foreclosures. But foreclosures are going to go through the roof. And I know many people like, why would someone let their house get foreclosed on? Because right now housing is stupid. You want to know why? These people have no equity. For you to be able to sell your house to avoid a foreclosure state, you need to have equity. You need to have money to pay the closing costs. You need to have money to pay the real estate agents. These people have taken all of the money out of their house with a HELOC. There's no equity in this house. So they have their primary mortgage and they have their HELOC and they're up to their eyeballs in debt. And this is why they're going to get foreclosed on. That's what we're, winter is here, baby. Winter is here. Winter is here. And mark my words, the craziness that you're going to see from now to the end of the year. And you know what's going to be the biggest tale? And I'm going to make this prediction right now. This is August. I feel that this Christmas season is going to be worse than last year. Holiday sales were not, because typically holiday sales since 2015 have been increasing 20 and 30% year after year. We had like a 12% increase last year when we we're supposed to have maybe a 35% increase. So. We're gonna look and we're gonna see what's gonna happen with Black Friday sales. We're gonna see what's gonna happen with holiday sales. And one of the reasons that winter is here is the stimulus is gone. 
right now there's no stimulus uh there is there's uh something i got there's a ppp credit it's twenty five thousand dollars per employee that they're putting out so that's kind of somewhat like stimulus but it's not cash money in hand so that's one of the things that's going out and there, there's like a 750 dollars check they ain't like that enhanced unemployment. They ain't like those $1,200 and $1,500 checks. Some families got like, you know, I think $7,000 between the direct stimulus checks. It, I mean, right now we have the real economy. The real economy, it's like the king's not wearing any clothes, right? And the people who we're supposed to have this special site to see the king's clothes. Right now, the king butt naked. The economy is butt naked. And the ramifications that will happen with that are happening. Because winter is not playing with you. All right, guys. So you want to go ahead and get in on the intellectual property school. Because we're getting into some serious training that can help you like I'm gonna tell you you can have a YouTube channel that's not making any money and that YouTube channel can put money in your pocket let me go ahead and join the intellectual property school and I will teach you how to play the game because see this is the United States of America the United States of America is a corporation baby the city that you live in is a corporation baby unless it's one of the unincorporated sections of the city but all major cities are corporations all states are corporations to play the american game you need to be corporate you need to have an llc you need to play the game because this is why everyone's trying to do bitcoin or these nfts because they don't want to play the game but look what happened to that market look what happened to that market Look at what happened to all of the guys who were talking stocks. A lot of those guys have stopped talking about stocks. You want to know now? Because the market's down. The market's down. But once again, this is an unprecedented opportunity for the people who want to roll up their sleeves and go to work because the recession is not going to last forever. The global reset is not going to last forever. So right now, you can position yourself to win by enrolling in the Intellectual Property School. The link's in the first comment, the link's in the description. Go ahead and enroll because we got some serious stuff that is coming for you so you can win in this current economy.